Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I'm going to talk about forensic genetics and uh, as usual I recommend you to pause video here, read the questions, choose your correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first question. DNA evidence is least reliable then and here is the four answers to choose from. Answer A. Fingerprint evidence. Answer B hair and fiber evidence, answer C, bite mark evidence, and D, none of the above. And the correct answer is answer D. None of the above techniques is more reliable than DNA evidence. And what is interesting, I took this question from the textbook that is about 10 years old, and in that textbook, the correct answer noted as answer A, that fingerprint evidence is more reliable than DNA evidence. During the past 10 years uh, there were many new techniques that were developed and nowadays DNA evidence is very strong evidence just like fingerprint evidence and his uh, example as you know the last Russian Tsar uh, Nicholas II were killed along with his family, um, his wife, uh, his daughters and uh, son. Uh, also even some servants were killed with them and uh, those people who killed them uh, this were about 90 years ago uh, their remains were found uh, not so uh, long ago and a scientist uh, questioned if those remains of the Tsar family or not and uh, those people who killed the family they were trying hard to get of any uh, evidence after killing uh, family members with guns, pistols and uh, even knives. Uh, they were trying to uh, get rid of the bodies, dissolving them with um, acid. But when they still had uh, some remains left, they tried to burn them and uh, whatever left after many hours of burning they just uh, bury covering with thin layer of the dirt and uh, can you imagine that 90 years later those remains were found and a DNA technique DNA profiling were used in order to find uh, who were those people and scientists have found that uh, those people are related. Uh, one of the reminds were of the mother, another of the father, uh, some of them were of the daughters, of the son, and uh, by comparing the DNA profiles with other DNA profiles of the people related to the royal family, uh, other royal families of the Europe, they have been able to confirm that this is Tsar's Nicholas uh, second family. They even uh, have been able to identify that uh, uh, Tsar Nicholas' son had hemophilia. This is known fact, but they have been able to identify it uh, using DNA techniques. So, as you see, no other evidence uh, that would go through such harsh conditions would survive, but DNA evidence, as you see, is very reliable technique. So we have to change our textbooks very frequently in order for the textbooks to keep up with the progress of the science. And next question, the correct order of collecting and processing DNA is, and here is the four answers to choose from. And of course, the first step would be to collect uh, biological evidence. And uh, next step would be extraction of DNA from that biological evidence. And now we can uh, cross out two incorrect answers. This is answer B and C. Now answer A and D left. And uh, the next step would be... Uh, DNA electrophoresis. But actually one step here is uh, also omitted and uh, 
I want to show you what this step is. Imagine that a human genome consists of 23 pairs of uh, chromosomes. And on those 23 pairs of chromosomes, we have some fragments that are uh, unique. Uh, those fragments is highly polymorphic and contains tandem repeats of the different um, number. For example, on the one of the alleles that you got from your father, you have 10 repeats on the same allele that you got uh, from the uh, chromosome that you got from your mother, you have uh, five repeats and so on. So uh, certain uh, chromosomes that contain such unique uh, polymorphic tandem repeats fragments were taken in order to make a CODIS system. This CODIS uh, system were proposed by FBI and uh, using um, PCR technique such fragments would be uh, replicated in millions of copies. Of course in order to make a copies of each fragment we have to mix this uh, uh, DNA with primers. So two primers for each fragment. So total number of the uh, primers would be 26 and using PCR we would be able to replicate each fragment in millions of copies. Of course each um, fragment would be of the different size and that means that when we'll do DNA profiling or uh, electrophoresis when we load all this mixture uh, and uh, turn on a current, electrical current, all those fragments would uh, line up according to their uh, molecular weight. Those uh, fragments that weight more would travel less distance and those that is smaller can travel um, longer distance. And uh, then such uh, DNA profile would be compared with uh, DNA profiles of the suspects. Like uh, you see on this picture, suspect number one, number two, and number three. And as you see, uh, this profile match uh, profile of the suspect number two. So uh, next step, as I said, after PCR would be DNA electrophoresis and DNA profiling when this obtained results would be uh, converted into the electronic format and uh, entered in the CODIS system and would be compared with existing um, profiles. And those profiles are taken from all the people that were arrested or convinced in uh, any crime. This depends on the state. And as you probably read in newspapers, or so on the TV, uh, nowadays it's very often when we can hear that someone who will arrest for the minor crime, like uh, home violence, can be connected uh, to much more serious uh, crime that were committed even 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. So as you see, the correct answer would be answer and this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.